Coming up next, a search for a missing San Diego man who rented a sailboat and headed south ends in tragedy. The murder trial date for Larry Miliete is delayed yet again in Chula Vista Court. A lot of frustration remains here in Southcrest. Today, a news conference that was supposed to be about grant money for flood victims ended with a lot of shouting. Do you recognize this tattoo? It was on the arm of a man who was murdered almost 40 years ago and still hasn't been identified. How the University of San Diego is raising awareness about neurodivergent learners. Who I am makes a difference. Grandma Sparky and her dream of honoring a billion people with blue ribbons. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. We begin with a tragic end to a days long search off the coast of the South Bay and northern Tijuana. The body of a missing boater has been found. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Officials say 27 year old American citizen Victor Osvaldo Villarreal went missing Friday after sailing a rented boat from Coronado to his family's vacation rental home in the Playa de Tijuana neighborhood in Tijuana. CBSA's Jesse Pagan has been tracking the search and the discovery this afternoon. Jesse. Hey guys, all of this has been developing throughout the holiday weekend, ending just a few hours ago when Mexican officials found a body in the area where Victor was last seen. According to our news gathering partners at Televisa in Tijuana, his family confirms the body is Victor's. The discovery is the culmination of days of searching. Televisa reports the family planned to spend Easter weekend at a rental home in the Real Mediterraneo neighborhood in Punta Banderas along the beach in Tijuana. Victor, a U.S. citizen, rented a sailboat in Coronado and sailed it south into Mexican waters to meet his family. After meeting with them, Victor set out to go back to the sailboat on a dinghy. Eh, la lancha se descompuso, eh, trataron, se le metió agua al motor. But that's when family says the dinghy's motor wouldn't start and Victor decided to swim him back to the boat. Witnesses and his family say they saw him get very close and assumed he made it once the boat's lights turned on. However, his family started worrying Saturday, and that's when they reached out to police. The weather made it difficult for search crews to go out into the water Saturday. Televisa reports the search started in full with several agencies on both sides of the border Sunday. Our cameras caught friends and family, as well as the Coast Guard, searching off the coast of Imperial Beach today. And now we come to the end of that search. Televisa tells us they expect more information from a press conference from Mexican officials. Soon as we get some more of that, we'll give it to you. Breaking news from Taiwan, where a powerful earthquake has rocked the island and collapsed buildings. Japan has issued a tsunami alert for the southern Japanese island group of Okinawa. We understand a small wave has gone through, but they expect more, some larger. The uh, first wave of that tsunami already believed to have arrived at the coast of Miyako and Yeyama. Uh, the U.S. Geological Survey puts the earthquake at a 7.5 magnitude. Taiwan's Earthquake Monitoring Agency gave it a magnitude 7.2. There's no word yet on injuries or fatalities. We will bring you the latest information as we get it here and on our online platforms. National city leaders are considering an encampment ban similar to one adopted by the city of San Diego. Tonight's city council meeting started just a few minutes ago. That's where the proposal will have its first reading. National City Mayor Ron Morrison says his city has seen an influx of unsheltered people since the city of San Diego's safe camping ordinance took effect last summer. If approved tonight, the measure would need a second reading and then a 30 day period before taking effect. We are at that meeting. We'll have more on what happens later tonight on the 10 on the CW San Diego and CBS 8 News Live at 11. We'll also have updates on all of our online platforms throughout the evening. The murder trial date for the husband of missing Chula Vista mother Maya Miliete has been moved yet again. This is the fifth time a new trial date has been set for Larry Miliete. As CBS 8's David Godfordson reports, the trial is now set to begin almost four years to the day that Maya went missing. Colby Ryan on behalf of Mr. Larry Miliete, who's present in custody, seated to my left. The murder trial for Larry Miliete is delayed again as his defense attorney Colby Ryan told the court his co-counsel Leanne Sabatini was out of town for a death in the family. There's some things going on in the background specifically to Ms. Sabatini. Uh, there was a sudden family loss, actually two losses in the past month that uh, we've been kind of dealing with. Um, so given that, uh, we are going to need some additional time, but I do believe the court is ready to set a trial date for today. 
This is the fifth time a trial date has been set for Miliate, who is accused of murdering his wife, Maya, on January 7, 2021. Her body has not been found, despite multiple searches by family members and supporters. The couple's three children are still living with their paternal grandparents in the family's home in Chula Vista. Judge Enrique Camarena set the new trial date for one day before the four-year anniversary of Maya going missing. You're waiving your right to a speedy trial so that we can set the trial on January 6th. Is that right? Yes, sir. Miliete hired new attorneys in October of last year, which delayed his trial until August 26th of this year. The judge's order means the defense will have an additional four months to get ready. I'm picking a trial date only because I, I think by January 6th, um, I think Ms. Sabatini and Mr. Ryan will have had the case, I think, close to a year, and I think that's sufficient time to prepare. The 42-year-old father faces 25 years to life in prison if convicted. The judge said he is not inclined to delay this trial again, so it looks like January 6th is a solid date. Larry Miliete will be back in court on August 5th. At the Chula Vista Courthouse, David Gottfriedson, CBS 8. It was supposed to be an announcement about a million dollars in grant money for flood victims from the San Diego Association of Realtors, but things didn't go quite as planned. CBS 8's Kelly Hesedal shows us what happened at a news conference with Chair Nora Vargas after some of those flood victims showed up in Southcrest to confront her. Everything started pretty typical. We heard from several speakers and then some neighbors in Southcrest who are clearly still very frustrated with the city and the county's response to this disaster confronted Chair Nora Vargas. Take a look. There's nothing I can say that's going to make That eviction easy. moratorium ended on March 20th. How many of them got their letters March 21st? That's so what, what did that do? I am so trying. what did that do? We're trying. Don't sit there and celebrate something that just screwed no, them over even no, worse. No. It's insulting. This is yet another publicity stunt. We have yet to see Nora Vargas on any of our blocks. We have yet to see her help. It's been two and a half months, and all of a sudden she shows up to announce that realtors want to donate funding. It's an insult. And that was Clarissa Marina. She was joined by a handful of other neighbors. Some are living in hotels right now and say they have no idea what's next for them. Now, the Realtors Association today announced grant money of up to $2,900 per household, which they say equals about a mortgage payment or a rent payment. But the neighbors say the problem is some of them have already been evicted by their landlords and now can't find anywhere to live that's affordable. This county deadline now looms. The county says by May 11th it wants all 800 households living in hotels to transition out of those hotels to other places. Now, I spoke with Chair Vargas. I let her respond to some of the claims that uh, she showed up today just for publicity, and here's what she said. Look, the reality is I've been here many times. I don't call the press to come to these meetings today. The realtors asked me to be here with them so that we can share with the information with folks about what the grants are. I've been here many times, but I am not the kind of politician that's going to put pictures about what I'm doing with the community or not doing the community. I'm just getting things done. And just to give you an idea of what Southcrest looks like today, uh, we still saw plenty of activity going on now two and a half months later. Homes where it's clear, cleanup is still underway, and there is still a lot of construction happening. Now, Chair Vargas tells me there are case workers that are working with each household that is uh, staying at a hotel right now. She tells me no one is going to be kicked out onto the street. As for the uh, relief money offered by the realtors, if you would like more information about that, we have a link set up on our website, cbs8.com. Just click on the help button. Kelly has it all, CBS 8. Thank you, Kelly. San Diego home sales are up as the median price for a home rises. According to CoreLogic data, which tracks the housing market, just over 2,100 homes were sold in February. That's up from a record low of less than 1,700 in January. CoreLogic says the median home price in San Diego County is now $825,000. That's up about 10% in the last year. Realtors say an increase in supply could have helped boost sales. California is opening up its lottery system for the Dream for All program. Registration starts tomorrow, and here's what you need to know. 
This taxpayer funded assistance program offers first time home buyers 20% of the down payment or closing costs up to $150,000. To qualify, you must be a first time home buyer and first generation home buyer. You also must earn less than $185,000 in income a year and have a credit score of 660 or higher. This year, it's a lottery system instead of first come, first serve. We still don't know for sure what those mysterious streaks of light across the Southern California were overnight. Many people believe it's debris from a SpaceX rocket that launched at Vandenberg Space Force Bay last night. But Space.com is reporting it was a big piece of Chinese space junk that crashed to Earth and caused those streaks of light. They're attributing that to the American Meteor Society. People up in Los Angeles, Orange and Riverside counties reported seeing these streaks. The lights appeared to break up into pieces and then scatter. Still ahead tonight, San Diego Sheriff's detectives reopen a 40 year old cold case and need your help. Plus the results of the April annual snow survey in the Sierra and what Governor Newsom is saying about our water supply. We're seeing a lot of sunshine right now. We're going to see more of that tomorrow, but we do have another storm system that's going to be packing a punch when it comes to cold air coming up. And how you can help encourage and empower neurodivergent people on this World Autism Awareness Day.